Hi, I'm Richard from ITS TV. I'm here today at Fines headquarters here in Daventry with Nathan. Um, and we're just running through a number of the products today and I thought I'd take a bit of time to have a chat about the various cutters and accessories that you get with the Multimaster, um, Fines most popular product by far. And there are so many cutters and sanders and things like that that we thought we'd take a bit of time to take you through each one individually, what are the best practices for them and how to get the most out of them as per applications and whatnot. So uh, Nathan, if you want to talk us through some of the more uh, yeah. common cutters that you've got. So some of the cutters that we've got and uh, sanding accessories and rasp etc that we've got out on the table here are sort of the ones that you get in your common kits. Obviously there's a lot more accessories we do for the machine but these are going to be the most common ones and the ones that most people will sort of come across in day to day use. Um, We'll start off just quickly with probably the most commonly used accessory for the machine, um, which are the what we call the, the e-cut saw blades, or plunge cutting blades, or flush cutting blades. Um, there's a number of different variants. They come in different widths, different sizes, um, and also different makeup of the blade. Okay, so depending on the application, this is very important. Depending on the application that you're doing and the material that you're cutting, if you want to get the best performance out of an accessory. You really need to choose the right accessory for the job. Um, it's pretty simple, all of the blades are marked up, whether they be a standard blade, whether they be a precision blade, whether they be a long life blade or a universal blade. Um, you find that on the outside of the packaging and you'll also find on all the blades that it's laser etched onto the top surface. So no matter how much you use your blade, you should be able to identify the uh, different type of blades that you're using. Um, on the e-cut blades then, we'll start off with a standard uh, HDS wood blade, okay, and really just designed for cutting wood. So if you're cutting clean timber, so an application here where we have a piece of timber here, or if we were cutting you know, a piece of skirting or a door jam, etc., we know that it's clean timber, we know there's nothing else in there, there's no nails, there's no screws, etc. in there, then standard wood blade would be absolutely fine. I'll just quickly pop one of the standard wood blades onto the machine. Okay, and just do a quick cut just onto, uh, onto a plain piece of timber. So we've got a piece of timber set up over here. And okay, so quick as you like. Yeah, quick as you like, nice clean cut on, uh, on a piece of timber, okay? That blade, obviously because it is only designed for wood, one thing that we don't want to do with it is we don't want to start cutting through screws, we don't want to start cutting through metal fixings, etc. Anything that is not timber, not suitable for So wood. if you're unsure, if say, if, if you've got a flat surface and you're unsure what's behind it, yep. probably best going with the wood and metal one, just in case you encounter yep. materials yep. that you don't want. Either the, the wood or metal, or we'll come to it in a second, the new long life uh, timber blade which you're doing. I'll explain a little bit about that in a second. So that's the first one of the standard wood blades, okay? So moving on from the standard uh, wood blade, we then have the precision wood blade. Uh, made from the same material as a standard wood blade, but with a different geometry on the, uh, on the front of the blade. So this one has a double row of, of teeth, high profile, um, gives you a better cut on your hardwoods um, and also tends to clear itself a lot better. The nature of the machine um, and the movement on the front end of the machine, these tend to clear themselves a lot better. If you're cutting things like MDFs, chip boards, etc., you might have got a lot of adhesive and stuff um, in the board. So that just means basically it's, it's a cleaner cut. It's going to give you, yeah, it's going to give you, going to give you a cleaner cut. But it does have its downsides because it's um, it's not a HSS blade, it's not a bimetal blade, um, and it does have high profile teeth in. Then if you do clip something with it. Um, and obviously it's, it's only designed to cut wood. If you do hit a nail or a squirrel attack or something with these blades, with the long uh, toothing on them, what you will tend to, to find is rather than just dulling the edge of the blade off, you will actually break the teeth oh, away from the blade. Pretty much become unusable with Yeah, if yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I'll show you that in a second, but if I first show you the blade cutting into, into a piece of timber. So again, we've got a clean piece of timber here, which the blade is designed to uh, Okay. 
gives you a quicker cut on your on your timbers. Um, but at the moment, we've got all the teeth on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, obviously, you don't want to try this at home when you've got your, your nice new blade on, so I'll do it for you. If we come up against um, nails or we come up against screws with the blade, okay, then what will happen? That's pretty dead. Yeah, we've <laughs> taken all the tips of the, uh, the blade off, and that blade is now useless. Yeah. Um, so that blade there is, is only designed for cutting timber. Um, definitely not designed for cutting any, anything other than, uh, than clean timber. We then move up to the newest blade that Finder introduced. Um, and it's a bit of a hybrid between the standard wood blade and the universal wood and metal blade. So we're moving away from a HTS blade um, and we've now gone over to a bimetal blade. So there's actually two different materials in here. Um, so it has a hardened cutting face, same geometry as the standard wood blade. So it's again a low profile blade. Uh, it's not the high profile toothing. Um, but because this is now a bimetal blade, um, although it's predominantly used for cutting timber because of the geometry on the teeth, if we come across a nail or a tack or if we undercut a skirting board or an architrave and we go through and we hit the plaster work or we dip the brickwork, it will not affect the, oh, okay. uh, the front edge of the blade, whereas it would be the standard yeah. wood blade. So again, you're still going to get the same cut in your timber as you would with the standard blade. But with this blade now, if we come up to a nail, this one. Would you like? Yeah, quite easily cut through them. And again, we've still, no, yeah, we've still got all the teeth on there. Still give you a nice clean cut on your uh, on your timber. So it's not designed to be used with nails or no, with no. metal, but it can cope with it. Yeah, yeah. It's, they say it's nail resistant, you know, it's nail resistant. If it comes up against them, it will cut through them. So this blade is designed for cutting metal and timber, but it's predominantly designed for cutting metal. So the front edge of the blade uh, has a waveform on it and it looks like a hacksaw blade. Um, as opposed to the finer tooth blades that you've got on the long life timber blades, or the high profile blades, where you've got the, the high profile tooth. And this one is actually set up like a hacksaw. You can just okay, see, yeah. see the wave. So it's actually the, serrated. That yeah, it has a wave, oh, wave form yeah, on yeah. it. Uh, so anyone that's using a hacksaw you know, will, will be quite familiar with the way that, that, blade, that blade looks. Um, so this blade, it will cut timber. Um, it will give you, because of the waveform on the blade, it will give you a slightly wider cut than either the standard or the, the long life wood blades uh, so you get a slightly wider cut but it is more than adequate for cutting, cutting timber but where it really comes into its own is if you are going to cut through um, metal with it. So we've got some metal fixings here okay in all fairness this is what you're going to see quite a lot of kitchen cabinets and things like that. Yeah right? yeah we've got brackets that you want to try and cut off you know they're hard to gain access to or you've taken the heads of the screws off as they've been in there for a long time it's hard to gain access and you just want to cut those off just to release anything that um, you're trying to get out. So with these again pop the machine on see there it just cuts, Easy cuts straight light. through it yeah but like I say it will still give you a cut on the fingers so you can still cut through your timbers and everything with it but if you are intending to go up against something that's made of metal then that would be the that's sort of blade, blade that, that you would use yeah um, so that's a good amount of cutters. What I have noticed we've got in here, Nathan, is one of those big old, tough, tough old screws here. Which one yep. of your cutters is going to deal with something like that? Right. Best? 
this is the reason that we've got the screws in here. Um, just something that I just want to get across to, to people that are watching is that none of these blades are going to cut through hardened screws. Okay, and it, it's a problem that we, or a problem that end users seem to have where they, they'll come to us and they'll say, oh, you know, I was using one of your blades and I've worn the edge off your blade. And we ask them what they were cutting. And they say, oh, I was only trying to cut a screw. Um, metal fixings like this, absolutely fine. You've got your, your nails, okay, and these are like relatively small nails, but you know, even a nail that's a bit bigger than this, absolutely fine with it. Your copper pipes and stuff like that, fine. But when it comes to something like this, and a lot of the, um, the screws that are now on the market are hardened, um, they won't cut them, and you will just find that you're just going through your, your blades. Um, if we take the bimetal uh, universal blade, which is one with the hacksaw. That's the one on. specifically used for cutting metal. For cutting metal, the one which is used here, and we've cut the timber and everything with it, and then we'll give that a go. I'm trying to cut through um, three of those screws, and we'll just see what state the, the blade's in afterwards. So, as we can see there that's 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 mangled the uh, screw a little bit but it's, yep. it's had a, an even worse effect on on the blade yep. does that mean that these blades aren't going to be able to to um, cut screws at all it, it depends on the makeup of the screw so if we just took a, a bog standard screw um, you know same made from the same material as, as a standard nail then yeah absolutely fine the machine will cut through it what we're coming up against a lot these, these screws here are actually from a collated strip of uh, drywall screws, which a lot of people are going to be coming across. Um, they're hardened. You know, a lot of the, the nail guns, etc., that are using hardened nails, and it's when you come across that sort of material that the oscillating tool, the speed that it runs at, uh, and we've seen from that the amount of heat that it generates trying to get through it will just dull the edge off the, uh, off the blade. So any oscillating tool, any oscillating tool, tool blade, this is not the sort of the hardened not, nail, not, hardened no, screw. Not the sort of application for it. And again, you know, not just on this, but we get a lot of people asking us, you know, whether they can cut uh, materials like stainless steel and stuff with them. Um, and a lot of the time, the answer is, is no. It's just the material is so hard, and the machine is running so quickly. The amount of heat generated just dulls the edge off the blade and just takes the edge off. So the oscillating tools, they're perfect for numerous yeah. um, numerous applications but not this everything has its limitations <laughs> okay lovely um so moving on we've got some nice tiles here yep so we've got some some tiling accessories so again in the kit you'll get a couple of the tiling accessories um just move that out of the way for a sec you get two of the tungsten accessories so you have a tungsten carbide blade and a tungsten carbide rasp okay Tungsten carbide blade, uh, first thing you'll notice about it is it's segmented. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's to give you the ability to cut back into a corner without creating an overcut. With a full circular blade, you have to stop short, otherwise you, you create an overcut. So if we pop that on and pop it on that way, just drop that in there. This blade can be used for brow lines, so if you've got damaged tile that you want to isolate and remove. Um, or if you've got weathered grouts and you want to clean the grout lines out, re-grout re it, just, it again, to, yeah, yeah. just to freshen everything up. Um, or if you want to cut into plaster work, so again we've cut the plaster box in there, you could use this blade to, to do that. If you were laying cables into plaster, um, thermalite, breeze block, etc, then soft materials, then you'd be able to use, use this on it. The other nice thing is because the machine doesn't have a rotary action on it, Especially when you're cutting the grout lines, what we're not going to end up is we're not going to end up with dust absolutely everywhere. Because it's not a rotation. Exactly, it's not because just it's, it's not rotating, rotating, it's not throwing it everywhere. So, pop it on. Move the rigid outline. 
Lovely. Yeah, the other nice thing about it as well is because it's not a rotary action, what you're not having is there's no direction on the blade and it's not coming up and chipping the glaze on the tiles. So you haven't got to be overly careful when you're, when you're using it. You don't have to worry too much about damaging uh, the surrounding. So let's imagine that we've taken the tile up, okay, and then underneath the tile we're left with an adhesive. Obviously we want to flatten the adhesive down so that we can put a new tile back in it's it's flush with the, uh, with the existing tiles. So we'll pop tungsten carbide brass onto the machine, mm -hmm. okay, and then So when using the Multimaster, there's a, a number of different um, options for sanding. There's either your conventional sort of delta sanding head, uh, which allows you to sand into, into the corners. We have the larger four and a half inch sanding pad, obviously for your, your larger areas, your flat surface sanding. And then one of the accessories you can also get for the fine Multimaster is what we call a profile sanding set. Um, you have a holder, it fits onto the bottom of the machine exactly the same way as any other accessory would fit. But then inside here we have a shaped profile. Um, there's different shaped profiles that are available for the machine. And then a piece of abrasive which is clamped over the, uh, over the top of the, the form. This allows you to sand mouldings, um, so architraves or skirting boards, etc., without creating a flat spot. So, first thing you would do would be to choose a profile that um, would apply to, to the surface that you're sanding. So, on this one here, we have a concaved form in there, and then what we're going to do is just going to use it just to sand this profile. So that's hopefully a good rundown of the section of, uh, of cutters, sanders, all the different um, accessories that are available uh, for the fine multi-master. Um, and hopefully we've given you an idea of uh, the best practices and how to get the most out of your blade. So you're not using the wrong blade for the wrong job, blunting it prematurely and having to go out and get another one. Um, if you've got any questions, of course, contact us at ITS or directly with the guys over at Fine who are happy to answer any of the questions. Um, you're quite happy easily get to find them on Facebook and on Twitter. Um, so I hope that's given some help and thank you very much for being here.